I'm Anri Sala. Um, I'm here in Naples at uh, Galleria Alfonso Artiaco for an exhibition body of work which relates to time but also comprises two different mediums, uh, sounds and as well as frescoes. My encounter with, with fresco dates from the mid-90s when I was finishing my studies in the Academy of Fine Arts in Tirana and it was a very incredible encounter for me because it was just recently introduced in the curriculum of the, of the Academy. We were supposed to try to do fresco and learn a little bit the principles of the, of the medium over a couple of months, but then I liked it so much that I took it over for more than a year. Uh, and also it corresponded to the last year when one was free to take time and to, in order to prepare the, 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 the project for the end of the, of the studies. Um, I believe that fresco back then it was exactly the, what, what led me later to photography and, and, um, and video because the, the medium, although it looks, it, it's two-dimensional uh, and makes things obviously of painting, I believe it's much, much closer related to, to other time-based mediums. Uh, the way how it reveals the image, the way how when you prepare a fresco, you are preparing it on a, on a freshly put intonaco, so you have to paint it while the intonaco is still fresh and wet which means that it does not, given the, the fragility of the surface, it does not allow for, for brush or violent strokes, violent brush strokes, um, and you have to come little by little and build the, the colors and build the, make appear the image through several uh, layers of what is called velature, which is like very, very diluted layers of, of pigment. So back then it, it played a very interesting role because it opened me up to, to another mindset of, uh, of, of working with the image or making an image appear. I was not yet introduced to photography or we were not uh, in the academy back then, so that was still something to come later. So to me, making fresco was the furthest away it could be to making a, a, a painting. Also, it, it, uh, it cleanses you from the pictorial gesture, which is somehow it's a, a, a a form of a, of a short, shortcut of, uh, of in the individuality, of being recognized uh, uh, when a painter. So, and it forces you or it welcomes you to work with the idea of composing with time. Why? Because it's, it's organized in giornate, there is that much you can paint within a day while the, while the window is open and the intonaco is still fresh. And then you have to anticipate one giornata one day after the other so that at the end when the image when the fresco is finished, the eye cannot easily tell the different uh, fragments apart. Well, here the frescoes here are organized around two subjects, two series. One is called surface to, to air, like the, of which is part of one here in the background. And the other one uh, is called Legenda Aurea Inversa. Um, surface to, uh, in both of them, they, they combine the, the painted surface of the, of the fresco with, some, with a marble insertion. Uh, like one could perhaps tell uh, in two places in this one. Um, what, what triggered the idea of the marble in insertion for me in the very beginning, it's that very often in the old frescoes, due to time and due to different forms of uh, meteorological or historical events, parts of the fresco have gone missing. And the way to do with them is always to fill them. And in some cases, one also restores also paint a little bit just to, to ensure a little bit of continuity of the image. So the, the missing part is painted very roughly, not as well as the, as the, as the real fresco. Uh, I was interested in replacing this missing giornata, this missing parts with uh, stone, with the marble pieces that I would compose in the image. Now marble, uh, um, first of all, it's older than any sur painted surface uh, by, by, the, by, by the time of its own creation that dates back to 300 million years. When we speak of primary marbles like the, the Cipollino or it goes up to 60 million years before our era like the Tartaruga, the, the other, some other marbles which are also present in the show. Now in service to air, the fact that I'm interested to, I'm, I'm, I'm using as a, as a reference images that I take when I'm flying on a plane through the window, through the plane window. So it's usually views 
of, of, of the sky from above and sometimes through cuts in the sky where could also it reveals parts of the, of the, of the geography of, of Earth. Um, in the process of painting they become much more abstracted but still is a depiction of, of, of clouds which is uh, the, the most fast moving event in a way because its, its shape changes all the time. Well, my idea to work on Naples is, is uh, it's a little bit like the fresco. It's, it's based on different sensations, different intuitions, different layers of intuition. Doing it here, you are also much closer in terms of the cultural frame and, and, and visual references. We are much closer to fresco main, uh, uh, making. Also because the way how I'm working between the images that I'm preparing and, and, the, and the marble insertions, there is something that does remind you uh, uh, subtly though, I hope, it does remind you of, the, of these moments in many churches where one goes from Rio Marble to, to, to Marmo Finto. To, so there, are, there is these moments when the, the, the it, the marble in this case, is represented just ne next to itself. And also Naples also has the advantage that fresco is very much part, I mean, in Italy in general, is very much part of the visual awareness. People do see frescoes very often. The surface to air, like this series, where these three three layers of time, the, the time as execution, time as represented through the images of the clouds, and time uh, uh, outside the, 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 the human scale of time, like the, the, the time of the stones being created. Um, those three, they just compose uh, uh, each other, within each other and also sometimes inviting the eye to go from one place to another place so this is what I believe that it, it, it gives the, the frescoes also because of, of their technique it, it, it gives a very time-based feeling because you have the feeling that you constantly your, your gaze is invited to jump to another place and sometimes it jumps into uh, a place that looks less abstract Sometimes it jumps to a surface that, that is fresco, sometimes into a surface that you believe it's fresco, but actually it's already stone. So I think it produces like a, a, a carousel for the, for the gaze. Well, for the other series, Legenda Aurea Inversa, where also these stones are, are present, there they are present more as substitutes of, of places of, of, of architecture in the image, uh, in the image composition. I was inspired by an artist that uh, I'm not the only one, but she's like, I'm, it's one of my favorite artists, Piero della Francesca and the Cappella Bacci in Arezzo, where that uh, all the series of frescoes that he did there come after uh, this book called Legenda Aurea. And I, I picked certain fragments from these frescoes to represent them, but as negatives. Imagining the fresco to be a positive, like when you take a picture of the fresco, it would be a, a color photograph, and imagine now what would be the negative of this color photograph. And so I painted the negative, which means that it inverses so many elements in the image, like what is dark becomes lighter, what, what becomes very, very deep and, and uh, uh, bec becomes like something which is very uh, well lit. The skin, instead of being pink, becomes more greenish and bluish, so everything gets uh, inversed. But by doing this, it also adds to the, to the fresco as a, as a technique which is so old and historical from the times of the Quattrocento, uh, Trecento, Quattrocento, it adds a, a, a layer, a filter, which is very modern because the the, um, the negative of a color image is something which only came with the process of the photography and, is, and the process of color photography and such inversion is not naturally an intuitive inversion in the brain like we, not only we but also in the, in the past in, inversing volume was very common like you would see it in coins but even just the fact that you would put your thumb to, to, to into a, a, a piece of wax or, or you just walk on the beach, it produces the, the negative of, uh, uh, of, of the body. But inversing colors, knowing that the red will become green and, and, and so on, it's something which is not necessarily intuitive and, then, and her, hence it's very modern. Because the moment that one sees them, one sees them, it, it, somehow it already triggers a photographic gaze.